This is off planet radio. Recording. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. This is uh, the podcast edition, and um, we got some things we want to kick around. Emily is here with me. <laughs> well, of course she is, because otherwise I wouldn't have anybody to kick anything around with. <laughs> so she's here. She's in the room. We're live. Well, sort of. Hi, everybody. We can do, we can do video, because I did put makeup on. I saw that. <laughs> so yes, whenever I say I don't want to do video because I don't have makeup on, you do video anyway. And then sometimes when I have makeup on, you decide we're going to do a podcast. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, I hi guys. Makeup is expensive. It is. Well, it's, I, I, I don't care about how much it costs. It's just time consuming. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it just makes one more, one, two more times a day that I have to wash my face than I already do. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> but it's a nice touch, and we're glad oh, that you yeah. honored us with. Uh, the full effect. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, so hi guys, welcome. Things are uh, interesting out there. Um, this is uh, Randy's last show before his little break. He has other stuff. There still may be some impromptu stuff, but um, there will be. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going um, completely deep six on this. No, he's not going deep six. We don't, we don't allow that. But we're giving him a well deserved, a well a well deserved break, and I have some really cool things planned. For the month, I have, I'm going to have some very, someone has some awesome guest co-hosts and some interesting stuff that we're going to cover. It's all going to be surprises, and some of the stuff will be a little bit of a departure from things we normally do, and others will be right in our usual wheelhouse. But, um, but see, that's the coolest part of all this, yep. is that I envisioned a long time ago actually being able to see other people, other voices, other hosts, other things going on, and... This is like, actually, the thought of sitting back and watching Off Planet Radio and me not being in it is actually kind of interesting. I'm liking it. Well, know that everything is always inspired by you. I don't know how much I like the idea of doing Off Planet Radio without you, but I also recognize the fact that you need and deserve a break and that we have bigger things that we're put to that you need some time to work yeah. on. And so, yeah. um, you know, and, uh, you know, all of the... Uh, all of the people who will be joining me will be people who are truly sort of um, their blood in the, in, in the in the sort of spirit of Off Planet Radio, and most of them are people who we have already or may at, at some point in the future be looking to do projects or, or things like that with. And so it will be, you know what I mean? It will be a good um, opportunity to to you know sort of expand more with some of them. And um, yeah, I'm feeling very inspired by a lot of things right now. So. Me too, me too. Yeah. And um, just also want to thank all you guys for the, um, one, we've received a lot of very nice uh, interaction on Patreon um, the last couple of weeks with the shows that we've done, both, uh, both the, the group chats and the, the regular shows. And um, I, we accidentally put up the group chat publicly. Uh, it was up for a couple of days. And so I know some people who haven't been part of the group up till now got a chance to see it and liked it. So maybe they will join us, but it just so people know that wasn't, wasn't done intentionally. We do always try and respect the privacy of the people in the group and whatever, but I actually think that we got some really nice comments from people on that. So I think that was actually okay. Well, the, the principle behind the whole Patreon thing too, is that yes, we are doing material that is behind quote, a paywall concept that I really kind of don't like. But at the same time, the patrons are the people that actually make all of it possible. Mm -hmm. They're the people that sponsor the YouTube videos that everybody watches for free and all the other things that we do that we kind of give away. And that's the spirit behind it. That's kind of what we want to do as we build the community is to advance that outward and push things out and let people know that the greater part of this is being carried by the least number of people that listen it's like on an order of one-tenth of the people that watch a youtube video support us on patreon 
Actually, it's it's a lot. It's a it's a it's probably, lot less than yeah, that. It's about, so we're supported numbers. by about one percent of our audience, which yeah. is still a great number. Um, but so you know, we just want to really thank you guys and let you know that we appreciate that. Yep, you're the heroes. Um, yep, yep. All right, so we're gonna do a, a a full show for pretty much a full show here tonight. So there will be a patrons hour, but in the public hour, um, I want to talk about sort of what is happening at this very moment, and that is the um, intentional destruction of Roseanne Barr. Um, it, it is just breaking in the last couple of hours. And um, I, we're going to talk about this a little bit, um, but mostly because I don't think Roseanne Barr is a perfect person. And she's said a lot of things that I don't agree with and that a person, you know, it's not politically correct to say or whatever. But um, Roseanne, just for every, most people I think in our community know this, Roseanne Barr is one of us. She is one of the few brave people who've admitted to that and spoken about that. Yeah. Yep. And when, when Roseanne has these large pr pr public meltdowns, um, there's something else behind it. This was probably intended all along. You know, she, uh, they made a huge deal of her comeback show. And on the show, she's a Trump supporter. And I think the entire idea is basically to say, see, anybody who supports Trump is a racist. Right, like that's the whole. There was so much energy. They brought her back, and there's been so much energy behind it. And you know, people from the left and the right watching it and enjoying it. it, it I mean, it was having the highest numbers that ABC has had on anything in forever. And they don't even give a shit about that because identity politics and all this race squabbling and all that shit is clearly much more important. Anybody, yeah. I've been following Roseanne on Twitter for as long as I've been on Twitter, um, and. Anybody who's monitored her Twitter for a number of years, it, will, it, it should be obvious to them that we are not always dealing with the same person, okay? Like there are times when, she, you know, she is tweeting things that like are in line with things I'm thinking. There's also times where some of the things she's tweeting are so far out of line from what, what would seem to go along with other things she's tweeted. One of the things is her constant waffling on her position on Israel. Now, Roseanne Barr is like me. She's half Jewish and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, I have no love for Israel and I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff. She might be more conflicted about it, but some, the way she goes back and forth on it, to me, and on, on a number of other issues as well, and the sort of erratic behavior she, she in, a, in a very different way than someone like Trump expresses, shows erratic behavior on Twitter, to me, has always been a sign of the many people living inside of Roseanne. And, you know, while she's aware that this has happened to her on an overall basis, I don't know yet that she's completely aware or conscious of when it is happening. So what I'm talking about, yes, is that she has alters and they are triggered by things. And if you well, look... I, and I also think it's interesting, you're seeing this on the heels of a two-week blast by Kanye West, mm -hmm. who was... You know, in similar ways, Kanye's kind of melted down a couple of times and Trump yeah. seems to be the epicenter of this. Mm -hmm. And it's a big deal because you're dealing with high profile figures who theoretically people in the entertainment industry are left and liberal and we have predictable models of how they respond to things. But in Kanye's case and Roseanne's case, they're not really following the plot. And like, it looks to me like in both cases, the, the trigger for all of this is, is this uber white right wing conflict that's going on within the political system right now. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And both of these people, you watch them repetitively be built up and then have one of these things happen. I mean, look, if you track the course of Roseanne's career, She's had epic meltdowns at the height of all of it. Every time yep. her start, has stardom has gotten to a certain height, she has one of these epic meltdowns. The, the thing with the national anthem at the baseball game at one point, right? There, there's been a number of these, right? She's had, there's, this has happened at least, her, her various divorces. And there's been, an, at least this has happened at least five or 10 times in her career. You know what I mean? Um, but you can also go and listen to her. One of the things I've always liked about Roseanne is she's not afraid to be with, the normal people. You can go and listen to her on Breaking the Set with Abby Martin from a couple of years ago talking about MKUltra programming, right? Like she talking about it to people. Um, 
she was at a chemtrails conference speaking that I went to in 2012. She does not, she does not separate herself from the people based on her stardom. She went door to door when she was running for president. You know what I mean? She's a very interesting person. And the other thing about all this stuff is even the things that she said, like, well, yeah, it probably wasn't smart to say them. You know what I mean? Some of them are true. You know what I mean? Or, and there are also things that a lot of other people say that don't have as public of a profile as she does. And what is happening? And of course, now like they're already everything. My dad's watching, you know, CIA and then in the other room because he can't stop and he watches that shit all the time. And they're already like, what they're most concerned about is what Trump's response to this is going to be. Like Trump has to have a response to this. Like Trump and Roseanne had anything yeah. to do with each other, and just like he did with the did with the Kanye thing. So the media can't get Trump to do what they want by, by dealing with Trump. So they're doing all this other shit around the stuff. This shit is so ridiculous and so insane. And, you know, she's a human being. And, you know, I, it feels to me like this was all engineered from the start. You know what I mean? The, and the whole, even the whole TV series. The whole bringing the thing At back. This time. Yep. The and whole thing. Her, her TV daughter. Why can't I remember? Sarah, Sarah Gilbert. Sarah, Sarah Gilbert. Gilbert, who has thrown her under the bus quite publicly numerous times today, who is also an executive producer on the show. Who's an executive producer yeah. on the show, who's a host on The View, who, you, you're right, who, who, you know, who is um, a the very... adept at playing identity politics. Very, she's a lesbian. She's adept at, She's also she, very smart. She's adept at, The yeah. whole thing to me, the whole thing, remember when the first show first came back, when she was on the Jimmy Kimmel show? Like, they always send Jimmy Kimmel to the people of Jimmy Kimmel when they're getting ready to set them up for some kind of something, right? That's part of his role, just like Ellen does that kind of shit and Chelsea Handler does that kind of shit with people. So, you know, we need to... Um, and I'm sure lots, I'm pre preaching to the choir on a certain level here, but Roseanne is really, really the only one who's spoken out in a very clear manner. There's a lot of other celebrities who've said things, put out sort of coded messages about cloning and mind control and things like that through Twitter or through their work or whatever. But Roseanne Barr has straight up said it. She's really been the only one to come out and straight up say it, you know, and she is so liked and so talented that it has all that stuff is she's still been able to have a career no matter how many times she falls on her face. And I assume she will be able to again after this, but at a certain point, you know, I just, you know, I'm sure today she's realizing what happened, but I'm sure while she's in the fervor of it, I mean, this is a person who um, likes being in the center of attention and who is a people person and who is, you know, is used to being to a certain amount of attention. And sometimes, doesn't understand, I'm sure, what is happening while it's happening. You know what I mean? And um, I just, the amount of brouhaha that's being made over this, I mean, she said some not nice things about Valerie Jarrett. And, you know, but Valerie Jarrett has done a lot of not nice things to the world. And if the world, if, you know, if, if, if Valerie Jarrett's ego and the people who, the political correct people who, support, you know, defend all this nonsense, can't see that and can't sort of take what you know understand when you do the kind of shit valerie J does people are going to say shit like this about you and you know this is just happening because roseanne barr is famous you know what i mean like lots of people say shit like this all the time people say things that are just as bad as what she said about Val valerie jarrett about donald trump about kelly conway about sarah sanders this is no worse than what that woman at the press uh, the press dinner said about Sarah Sanders. Let's and call this what it really is. In some ways, despite the fact that I think Roseanne's being reasonably authentic, this mm -hmm. is really a media cage match kind of situation. Yep. It's staged. It's designed to put you into a situation of intense conflict in a very rapid succession of events. And Twitter's yep. perfect for that because it's blast. You tweet, you blast, you throw something out. It's responded to, it's consumed, it's rebroadcast, it's circulated, it's reverberated. Well, Twitter's it's also, yeah, no, absolutely, you're absolutely right. But Twitter's also, for, and some, a few people caught this when I said this on one of your tw uh, Facebook posts in the comment thread. Um, Twitter is, blue, is, is bluebird technology. You were, we were joking, you were blue, joking about Jordan Sather and tweeting from the base and well, whatever. It's bluebird technology. It's bluebird technology, yeah. literally. And I don't mean the Blue Avians, I mean part of Project Bluebird. 
getting people, go look, go look up what Project Bluebird was about and then tell me that the, 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 Twitter doesn't create this same phenomena in 140 characters or less. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's applications of technology, which is exactly what the projects did. Mm -hmm. They basically took existing technology and weaponized it. Mm -hmm. And weaponizing the social media space was largely tasked to three different groups of people that included Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Those are the dominant three in the social media. But it's also a lot mm -hmm. about creating amnesia, right? And mm -hmm. think about how what Twitter does. Like someone can do something wonderful on Twitter and then two weeks later they do something that's a, 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 like awful and everybody forgets about the thing that they did wonderful before. So it's constantly creating amnesia in the people, in the people who look at Twitter, right? Because they're just re Stimulus responding. Stimulus and response. Stimulus and response. It's yeah. like fucking Pavlov's dog. Yeah, because of the fact that it's so rapid and they know from the news cycles. Mm -hmm. that people have a 24-hour memory and that's it. We, we basically wash every 24 hours. The amnesia sets in. The shock value sets in, you get the next wave, and you curls under, and they bring something else up. Mm -hmm. And so in the whole course of doing this, what they're doing is they're doing metrics in the background that are testing all these responses. This is an on-the-fly, real-time social engineering project that constantly me measures and, and reports back the responses. And then those are nuanced and echoed and reverbed and reconformed mm -hmm. back out into the ecosphere somewhere. Yep. And so, yeah, so, you know, just um, this is going to be a shit storm for a couple of days and then they'll move on to another one. There'll be another shit storm right behind it. Yeah. But it'll she's it'll a, always be Trump centered because that's what they're doing. Yep. Trump is their Trump card. And so when they have nothing else to do, they can just play that one over and over and over again. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so, but I just want to, um, I'm not approving of what was said or, or done or whatever, but sort of extend my, you know, my sort of, I don't know if it's sympathy or empathy, maybe it's empathy. empathy and sympathy empathy and to a, to a person, to one of the few, celebrities out there who I think is actually somewhat of a real genuine person yeah. and who has had courage to talk about things that no other celebrity has and um, who, you know, this, whether she is a willing dupe or a completely controlled dupe or whatever at this point, like this is, this is, um, this is um, um, it's gross. We started getting a nasty echo there. Oh, sorry. Well, Heaven whatever. forbid I whatever. extend sympathy or empathy without an echo, right? <laughs> um, I think the so, other yeah. side that you have to look at is that there's something about Roseanne, even about who she is, mm -hmm. that communicates to, I don't like the term average American, I'll just say everyday people, people yep. who are just normal, she projects an image that for them is comfortable. Mm -hmm. She's not... Even in real life, as you pointed out, she's not the celebrity type person. But the, the genuineness of her comes when she shines, she really shines. Yep. I mean, when you see her eyes light up and when you see her smile and you, you she's, hear she's her. A, she's magical. Yeah, she's magical. She's magical. And she's able to, you know, she's, she's crass. She's not perfect. You know what I mean? But there's a, a, a common person sensibility about her and uh, like a, an ability to laugh at how, you know, how, how, how really dark and cynical life is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And sort of be able to enjoy herself anyway. And this person, she's lived through a shit store, man. She's had tons of stuff happen to her. Tons mm -hmm. and tons, you know, tons and tons of stuff. And she's always laughing. She always ends up you know, figuring it out and make, have, you know, having a laugh at it. And um, in some ways, those are really admirable qualities, you know? Um, we, so, require, yeah. we require the court jester. The court jester was the only person in the court of royalty that could say the truth because they were the yep. jester. Yep. That's the role of the joker. That's the role even in the tarot deck is largely, it's, it's a truth card, but it's a truth card that plays on the side that has levity and a certain dark humor to it. 
And, yep. you know, it's not lost on me that a lot of these Jungian archetypes and synchronicities play out in these actors, both scripted and subconsciously, because of who they are and because of the roles that they largely fulfill, even outside of their scripted roles. They, it's like Kanye West. At the end of the day, you, you could take away the Cardassians and all the platinum records and everything, and Kanye West, is, he's kind of a thug. And that part of him still comes out whenever uh, he's sort of it caught off guard in, a, in an off guard moment. He's not easily scriptable. And, I, and that's why I like Kanye West. I, I'm a huge yeah. fan of him for that about, reason. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'm not really into his kind of music or anything like that, but like, I appreciate his willingness to not go along with the pack. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Um, when he could, you know, so, you know, that's, there's other things he could do to create controversy that, that to sell more records that wouldn't quite be as true. And he's in, in that's, those aren't the ones he's chosen. He could just put his wife's bottom on the cover of his, you know, whatever, or <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? But yeah, no, I have a level of respect. Uh, he also, I mean, it's very, you know, he's also one of us. It's very obvious that they've mm -hmm, various mm -hmm. times during his career taken him off to the mind control factory that I come from for, open, for, for uh, reprogramming. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he disappears and comes back with the bleach blonde head. We all know what that means. You know what I mean? We all know what that means at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it's, they just, it's, a, it's symbol for a dip in the sheep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, you know. Exactly and, like when Britney Spears shaved her head. I mean, same thing. You know, so, code. yeah, so anyway, um, I thought that was interesting and I wanted to talk about that. And then the other main thing I wanted to talk about in this portion, and then we can, you know, anything else that you might want to talk about that's sort of going on today-ish, is all of this, uh, any of you who've been trying to find something interesting to watch on YouTube over the last three or four days and haven't been able to find anything interesting because every video on YouTube right now is about Tommy Robinson, will appreciate this conversation. Um, I was kind of mystified as to, how, like this is to me this is getting as much or more attention as any of these shootings and whatever which tells me there's something wrong here there's something funny and this one is de being played at the alternative media well all the shootings for the most part are played at the general public and then you know they get the alternative media to play their little role in it this one is being aimed completely at alternative media um and i can't I just cannot believe how much coverage it's getting and how people are just buying this hook line and sinker and it really has actually almost nothing to do with what actually happened or whatever but robert i was listening to robert this morning on the way to work and he put up a 15 minutes of flame called the the tommy robbins false flag and i was like bravo thank you for saying exactly what i've been sort of thinking here for people who don't know tommy robinson is a british activist who is very anti-muslim okay and he's um he's one of these guys who poses as sort of he claims as a nationalist, not a white nationalist, although the mainstream media likes to call him a neo-Nazi or a, um, a white nationalist or whatever the, whatever the alt-right and all that kind of stuff. When what he really is, is a, 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 a posing as a nationalist, but is one of these guys who's a nationalist, but a Zionist. So it's very anti-Muslim, but is in love with Israel, right? And, mm -hmm. and he basically has done a lot of work, you know, where he's complaining about all of the immigrants, all of the Muslim immigration, immigration and a lot of the uh, violence and pedophile grooming gangs and gang rape that has gone on as part of this. And he's very, um, he's not polished. He's very, uh, you know, everyday man. And he, he's been arrested a couple times for different parts of his activism. And he was on probation and he covered a trial that was happening with the Muslim grooming gang. And he you know, was basically live streaming from the courtroom. And in some, in some way, and this is what people in the mainstream media, I mean, in the alternative media are missing, was violating the conditions of his early release from the last time he was arrested. Now, you know, guys know me. I don't believe in government. I, it's all bullshit. He shouldn't have probably been arrested the first time, whatever. I believe in ultimate free speech. But the fact of the matter is, is that it does seem that he broke a condition of his, this could all be bullshit, but a condition of his prior release. And that, he actually, so Britain does not have free speech like we have here, and they have stricter laws regarding fair trials. So 
apparently the reason that the judge did this is because by him doing what he was doing, it was jeopardizing the trial because he's like, it was it's contamination of jewelry pool possibilities and all that kind of stuff. So these people are actually trying to make sure this Muslim grooming gang, you know, doesn't get off when they've done it. Maybe, I don't know. And I, I don't know all the details, but just the way that there has been so much attention on this feels to me contrived. Um, everybody literally like I think on Saturday and Sunday there was nothing in my YouTube feed except for shit about Tommy Robinson and it's coming from people who are like you know um, right Zionist kind of media more alt-right media regular alternative media Alex Jones all these kind of everybody everybody is taught people who usually just talk go to like talk about you know the city council meetings where whatever they're taught everybody is talking about this and like nobody is stopping to ask and go, wait, wait, wait a second, why is this getting so much attention? And they're complaining that the mainstream media is ignoring it, whatever. It's really, there's something wrong with this story. Um, you know, this, like all of these people who do this stuff, like and get all the attention, all of them are like Zionist people. So to me, it seems like a way to just continue to bring attention to the Muslim issue and distract from the real Muslim issue, which is going on in Palestine with Israel and all that kind of stuff. And to um, get people sort of up in arms to defend somebody um, who has a questionable position. Um, I don't know. It feels like it's designed to like get the alternative media to sort of step into a, bo step in step into a box that they're not going to be able to get out of. But also just to, I mean, nobody's talking about shit that's going on with Israel. I haven't seen anything about uh, in my YouTube feed about Israel or Palestine or any of that shit, even though all that crap was happening there last week, right? This completely took away from any attention on that. No, because it's all scrubbed. Yeah. It's, it's scrubbed off Twitter. It's scrub, scrubbed off of YouTube. Well, even if it's there now, this is creating so much noise because it's trending. That's the other part of it. It's shut yeah. down. Yeah. Um, they don't want that conversation on the table. So it gets <laughs> the entire radicalization of Islam, which is a tiny fraction of the total population of Islamists around the world, was basically a weaponized religious structure that started in World War II. Right, but the people doing it are Israel and the United like Israel, exactly, but the, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States yeah. create this. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Well, the Nazis, and it's not lost on me who was behind the Nazis in the first place, the same right. people that were also pushing the formation of the, of, of the state of Israel. Yep. I mean, you've got to look at history from the long play, which most people can't do. And you have to go back to 1898, and you have to revisit Theodore Herzl, and then what happened with the Balfour Accord and what happened that set the stage for World War I, which dovetailed over into World War II, which created all of the perfect storms that enabled the formation of Israel to occur and the partition of Palestine, the entire game that we've been in for the last 75 years. And in that, there had to be a fair amount of scapegoating of certain groups of people, including in some cases certain Jews as well. Mm -hmm. they're perfectly willing to toss a few over the side of the boat completely to feed the sharks because it's again it's kind of a cage match if you just realize how you're being played with polarities mm -hmm. and i don't follow most of this stuff i mean i'm grateful you do i don't know what's in my youtube feed because i don't care i don't give a <laughs> rat's ass about youtube but you don't have as many hours in the, of the day in the car as i do which is right, right. the only time I ever listen to YouTube anymore. And, you know, I, I listen to some of the silly political stuff because, I, like, it, I find it more entertaining. Um, I don't really listen to too much of that other information anymore just because I'm really engaged in what we're doing and the way we're doing it. I don't know how much I want to be colored by other stuff. Um, also, I'm just, I'm at sort of a level of information fatigue between school and work and our work and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But I actually get most of my news from listening to Robert in the morning. On 15 minutes of flame and so if you want your news d delivered with um humor and uh t touch of astrology and um you know through the lens that only robert has you can kind of get some of your your news from him as well and so i do and so everybody should go check out robert's uh even by the time this goes out it'll be a little bit later but um 
you know, go back and look at Robert's show, show about the Tommy Robbins and See, the plan. problem with what we do is that we don't do a daily and we don't put it out fast enough to be timely. So a lot of things we talk about yep. have such a short shelf life, which is why I've always traditionally... Well, the only reason it. I wanted to talk about both of these things is because these, thing, these, these were perfect examples of things yep. that occur over and over again. And these are, really e these are ones where it's really easy to see it. And so even if it's passe by the time people get this, like, you know, it, it's, this is, it's, this, these circ, I mean, there's a, Tommy Robinson has been set up to play this role, right? Go mm -hmm. back, watch how, what his rise has been like and how much identity and branding and money he has, ma he has made for himself um, just being the anti-Islam guy. And Robert points out that he's sort of in the same camp and cahoots and networked with the same kind of people as like Pamela Geller and Mark Lett, all the people, yeah, yeah. this whole anti-Islam thing. But anybody who does an anti-Jew thing is fucking crucified, right? Yeah, exactly. So they do the false crucification of people who are anti-Muslim. They just call them an Islamophobe. Or you do what Pamela Geller, Geller did down in Texas and you bait Muslims mm -hmm. by yep. insulting well, that's what God he does. and that's what then he does. invite a radical response to something and then cry victim. Yep, I mean, that's, that's exactly the kind of play that, that Mossad sets people like Pamela Geller. And that's what, that's what my point was saying that these are all Zionist yeah. people. He does the same thing a few months ago. Uh, Lauren Southern was barred from the UK for, you know, that kind of shit. She yeah. baits Muslims. She had, was walking around with the poster that said Allah is gay. And that, you know, sure, free speech, you should be able to say it. But, you know, like that, of course, that is designed to do that. So, and all of them have been associated with publications that are pro-Israel, that are pro-Zionist, that, prob are, you know, they, they're probably getting, you know, money from that kind of stuff, you know. So this is all, that's just the point, guys. Like, whenever uh, the, the whole, I mean, the... The Muslim Jew thing is like right hand, left hand. And when the right hand is, you know what I mean? It, what's, what's distracting from what's going on on the other side? You know what I mean? And I just, um, yeah. So I, even before I heard Robert's show, I was already thinking about, God, why? I just, like, if I see the name Tommy Robinson one more time, you know, and this is like, it's not, um, I don't feel like he's doing any important groundbreaking work, but he sure gets way more attention than people who do. <coughs> well, and also Tommy Robinson, which I did not know this until today, is not his real name. He has four other names. So and his, the, the, and his original last name is Lennon. Oh, really? That's yep. interesting. I don't know if it's Lennon like John or Lennon like Vladimir, but... <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't actually that, that matter. Pun played, yeah, yeah. That, that pun was played... Yeah. That pun was played decades ago. Lennon, John Lennon himself played that, uh, that game. What are you looking at, Randy? So... Um, Hold on. Uh, unfortunately, I'm doing this real time, so. That's all right. We all have time. We're just sitting around having a chat with our friends here. Exactly. So let me screenshot this and let me go over this. Um, this has already caused a fair amount of heated argument, even in my own household over my take on this, but I'll, I'll, I'll just toss this out because we're headed into um, what I will call probably the high strategy gender wars coming and the religion, what they really are is they're religious wars. So let me share this. And I don't know if you've seen anything about this. You live in California. So this is the website of um, Phil Liberatore, mm -hmm. who's running for what public office in California? Is he running for something, 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 something? Oh, let me, I, what, what, what is the bill? Hold on, let me see okay. this. So let me slow down. So he's I just... running for Congress in California. Okay. Okay. All right. This has to do with first off. <clears throat> This is rather well crafted. So this is discussing uh, a bill that's being proposed. Uh, it's AB 2943, which he claims takes away First Amendment rights of those who want to help or counsel people with same-sex attraction or gender confusion. Mm -hmm. So what's really going on here is this is being extrapolated out now. 
uh, the bill explicitly states that advertising offering to engage in or engaging in sexual orientation change efforts with an individual will become illegal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Phil Liberatore has climbed on his soapbox and he's, ex he's extrapolated this out as being suppression of free speech on mm -hmm. behalf of Christians, specifically conservative Bible-believing Christians who believe that homosexuality and sodomy will send you to hell mm -hmm. and the practices around uh, basically reprogramming people who are conversion the, therapy yeah it's yeah it's conversion therapy right so wherever people stand on this and it doesn't matter um, I had done a lot of research and I actually encountered somebody on the internet who was telling a horror story about being forced into conversion therapy as a court order in order to be able to see his children. He was a gay man. He was divorced. Wow. Trying to get access to his children. <clears throat> he came out of three months of conversion therapy and he was completely psychotic, un unable to even take care of himself anymore. That's how badly off he was. And what they do is they basically use the same methods. If you read the methods that he describes mm -hmm. during MKUltra, right. they're designed to take somebody and traumatize them out of being, quote, homosexual and into right. a functioning man. Oh, yeah, no, gay men aren't men, are they? Really? Well, I think you could make the case that what Christianity has done is they've traumatized their children so badly that the reason most of them can't come out is because they know they're going to be excommunicated, they know they're going to be thrown into gay conversion therapy, and they know that they're going to be ostracized by their community. It happens all the time. So this bill is just, you know, this is a reach. Nobody's, nobody is going against free speech here. The simple fact of the matter is, first off, this goes way back to my early days in shortwave. Churches are corporations. They're 501c3 government licensed corporations. Secondly, most people doing conversion therapy are operating under uh, licensure as psychotherapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors. Therefore, it is within the purview of the state to regulate anything that claims to be counseling, any type of psychotherapy, any type of behavior modification. The government is not out of its realm. I'm sorry, but you, you know, the biggest bootlickers for government, frankly, are Christians. So sorry, guys, you got in bed with Rome. This yeah, is what I was going to say, I was going to say, I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not, uh, you know, my position on this is that I'm against any of the, I'm against, I, I, I'm against law, I'm against all laws either way, but because these people, you know, the, the, a lot, you're right, a lot of these people are in bed with government, so if you want government, you want to use government for the things you want, then you all, you have to understand that this is the flip side of that. Now, personally, I don't think this is business of the government, I don't think there is any business of the government, that's me, I don't think, I, no, not everyone has to agree with me. Um, I am a free speech absolutist, so I think people should be able to say whatever they want. Um, but I also think that, you know, um, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't see this as really a free speech issue because these people believe in God. I mean, the whole... It's not I, a free speech it, issue. It, it, it's, it's a mess. It's, it's a mess. I don't believe in conversion therapy. I don't believe in any law that limits free speech. And I also don't believe in government. So yeah. I have... That, that's my feeling about this. I don't agree one way or the other. Um, but also my biggest problem with any of this is I'm rapidly coming to a point where I don't even think most people, this includes therapists, just average people in general, actually understand anything about gender, <laughs> no. about identity, about um, a certain level of homosexuality, uh, or even their own sexuality if they're heterosexual. I don't think they understand the purpose of, like, I, I don't think people understand androgyny. I don't think they understand. No. I think they're, they're very confused about this whole transgender thing. I think actually people know very little about what's really going on with any of this. 
And this is another part of an externalization of something that should be in a, inter an internal, an internal process. process. They're yeah. making a, like a legal situation about something that is a deep internal issue. Yeah. Um, so it's not even legislating morality, it's legislating your inner life. Um, either way you go with this, whether you think it's good or you think it's bad or whatever, um, this is, I think that religious people are some of the most deluded people in the world. Uh, some of them are super nice and some of them are, you know, like are practicing the, the good things that religion can have, but like religion is about mind control. That is what is, a, that, that it's, that's what it's about. I guarantee you the people who are, uh, who propose the ideas of religion, right? And who bring that to the masses are not following the same rules that they expect you guys to follow. That's why even yeah. though the priests, the priests and the pastors and whatever all say that homosexual sexuality is wrong, they're all also diddling little boys. Well, from my right? excursion, yeah, and from my excursion through the religious system, which was sporadic and, and played out over two decades, there's enough closeted people inside those churches to keep their own therapists busy for about a decade. <laughs> based on the level of homophobia, based on the things that do get revealed about how many times pastors, assistant pastors, counselors within church structures are caught molesting the little children. The Catholic Church is just the giant colossus in the middle of the room. I mean, the lawsuits are still rolling on that. We're almost, we're 25 years down the road on this and we're still seeing lawsuits over, over pedophilia inside all also, of the churches. Do you remember also a lot of these people who practice gay conversion therapy, the therapists or religious leaders who they're do this? They're former gays. Have, oh, well, they're not former gays. They're still gays. And they're, right, trying, right. they're trying to convince themselves. Do you guys remember this whole issue with Michelle Bachman's husband a few years ago? Mm -hmm. Did y'all get a look at him? Did y'all look at him? Let's right? not forget the, the vice guy. president of the United States, Mike Pence, is... Right. A product. But this guy, his, Michelle, ba a lot of the, I mean, Michelle Bachman was criticized for a number of things, but the, mm -hmm. one of the things was about her husband's profession, which he was engaged in. He, he had ran a gay conversion th practice, right? Yeah. And it was so hilarious. I think it was so hilarious. When you listen, look at this guy, listen to him talk. It was like this guy, anybody believes that this guy is going to convert somebody from being gay to not being gay. It's hilarious, right? Like he's the, he was the poster child, the advertisement for why this doesn't work. I can't imagine how he has any, you know, but that just tells you the level of mind control that these people are under, that they would think that that, the whole thing was so insanely hilarious to me. Um, but what is not hilarious is that there are real people and real children you know, who are, get lost in the midst of this. And um, this is such a, you know, like, you know, we've been talking about some of this and we're going to get into some of the really yeah, weird, yeah. Um, you know, we're going to start really going there more and more in this discussion about gender and, and androgyny. And, and, you know, I, I don't even know if there's a term for exactly what some of the things we're going to start to kind of get into, but but um, sort of branded it under the heading psychosexuality just because I like that. Um, yeah. Well, I didn't invent it. Freud did, but we use it because we are in a war now. We're in a generation of people who for better or for worse are waging a gender war and it is creating massive confusion. It is being capitalized on by big pharma, by the medical industry, by the politicians. Mm -hmm. They are being, now politically franchised in some ways and pandered to. But that isn't really the answer to all this. The answer is when we have a conversation about how free are you to be able to address the being inside and express that externally without being mocked, excoriated, committed to a mental hospital, Put on antidepressants and antipsychotics. Put on they, put on gender reassignment uh, uh, on, drugs. Yeah, exactly. Give it, it been being recommended to have surgery. Like and right, there's two extremes to this. The conversion therapy. The other side of this is the teachers in school who are now writing up recommendations for gender assignment on kids that are six. as as small as as ten, eleven, twelve years old. Oh, I think they're doing it younger. I thought it's criminal. It's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And if you guys go go. 
Brandy had a post a couple of weeks ago that was, of course was taken down because it talked about the bear, which is now apparently uh, uh, something that's uh, off limits to talk about or you'll get everything you have taken down. We'll be addressing that in a future show. Yeah, that's uh, bears and the aspirin people remember them. Well, yeah. the bear AG or the Nazi pharmaceutical company. Yeah. So they, but some of these, literally some of the chemicals that people are taking for these gender issues are well, they're programmable matter, obviously, but mm -hmm. these are, yeah. this is completely reprogramming. To me, this is um, a huge step towards transhumanism. We've talked about that, but this is actually just like, it, it, like literally there's something almost um, like computerized or, or, or code like about, like it makes it so obvious that code is being rewritten in a way that is, feels very technological. Um, it's really disturbing, you know what I mean? And this has nothing to do with like whether one thinks it's okay to be, you know, uh, transgender or whatever that, this is like something, this is something that is damaging to people's minds and bodies or aside from the issue of gender or sexuality. This is not healthy for any human body or any human mind. Human minds, I, yeah. because it, it's a game of psychological warfare now. There's, there is, deliberate obfuscation out there being perpetrated on people on both sides of this argument. Yes. You know, just the fact that there is now this pressure for people to take what anybody that's gone through adolescence knows that you deal with your identity on a very visceral level in the area of sexuality. You want to stop and sharing your screen? You want to stop sharing? Oh, there we go. Okay. Good. Okay. Never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. And when you are in that place, you are also suggestible. There's mm -hmm. cultural influences as well. So that like, anybody, anybody like that, that has an identity that's in transition, and I don't mean that in the, th that way, but everybody's identity. But that's, in, that's, the, that's the way they've even fucked up the language that now you can't even yeah, say the word transition. The term transition. Being, right? Like it, it's crazy. But do you remember like, like uh, uh, several years ago, maybe not several, maybe like five or six when they were talking about how the, the possibility of creating vaccines that would eliminate un, undesirable characteristics in people such as, you know, conservatism, right? Yeah. Yeah. Think about yeah. this. What if the shit that's rewriting someone's like, uh, hormones and gender stuff can also like have piggybacked on it that, that to eliminate some of those characteristics that were being talked about when people were fearing a vaccine like that, right? Like, what if that, what if that's part of it? Like, what if that's part of the code, right? To eliminate other unwanted characteristics, to you know, to eliminate certain kinds of thought because those certain kinds of thought occur in certain areas of the brain, right? And so mm -hmm. if you're rewriting those areas of the brain based on gender, well, why can't you just also put a little something else in there to plug up another area? Yep. I don't know if I termed any of that right, but do you get where I'm going with that? Not completely. Okay. So the, a couple of years back, there was talk about uh, people that they ultimately being able to create like vaccines right? Like mm -hmm. in the future. And some of these vaccines would be the kind that like Bill Gates wants to create with mosquitoes. So people don't have, you know, for people who won't agree to have them, they can just be inoculated by a mosquito bite, right? That it, it might be possible to create vaccines that would um, weed out certain undesirable characteristics in human beings. And some of the more mm -hmm. extreme people took that to mean that, oh, maybe they, they you know, certain kinds of thoughts and ideas would try and be weeded out certain you know what I mean? or people who had a tendency genetic people who had genetic traits that tended towards certain kinds of thoughts or ideas or whatever that that, that these vaccines or these whatever this shit was could somehow affect that you don't remember this conversation mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah, so what if along now all of a sudden we have all these people taking hormones and very, very designer drugs designed to rewrite certain, the code in certain parts of their brains and bodies. We don't know what else is piggybacked on that besides just a shift from male to female or vice versa. Does, well, what we know is that, that better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's an extreme step to chemically alter your body. We would be appalled if people put you down on a table 
and did that to you involuntarily. Mm -hmm. We would be appalled if you were placed into a situation where you were influenced unduly to do the same thing. So we have to assume that in the culture at large, there's a certain sector of people who are in some valley of decision about who they are gender-wise, which is separate than expression of sexuality. So in that valley, then there's kind of a sorting process that has to take place. And this is where we have to have the conversation. We have to reach out to people. It is once you begin these processes, you know, going on to uh, testosterone or estrogen or whatever um, supplements of <clears throat> these what is, what, I mean, we're, we're talking about altering your glandular, glandular system, right. your endocrinal it's system. It's about your, your glands and your hormones. Yeah. And mean, hormone hormones, call, hormones therapy. call for other things besides just gender, right? Yeah. Some of the same ones, like there are other issues, um, like testosterone and estrogen do other things besides just male, yeah. you know, make one male and female. They're, yeah. they're responsible for affecting other things in the body as well. Behavior, psychology. Yeah, uh, physiology to a certain metabolism, degree. all metabolism. sorts of things. Yeah, and what's appropriate you know, in one biological unit is not necessarily appropriate in another. Yeah, and we all run a stratum between the two so-called extremes of male and female. There, are, there's quite simply in this world there is a, a multitude, a plethora of combinations in expressions of personality and gender identification and there are feminine men and masculine women and everything at a thousand shades of gray in between all that. When you do through, go through the sorting mechanism of trying to figure out how you express, the last thing you need is undue influence in either direction. You need to get very clear about that. And the culture and right now is- Especially under the influence of the media. And celebrities and things yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. I mean, a this very is, inner process. It's trendy and it's cool. And Bruce Jenner was the poster person for this, not undeliberately, because Bruce Jenner. Bruce you Jenner, just said Bruce Jenner. <laughs> but it's true. Think about Bruce Jenner and look at him. And and he, he, he was he was cast. Experiment. He was he was cast in this role from the very mm -hmm. beginning. And anybody you know, exactly. people, I don't know how people missed it. But go back and look at the pictures of Bruce Jenner over the years, yep. and you can see that this was a project long in process, and that he, you know, we're dealing with something here a little different than what they like us to think we're dealing with. Well, we haven't even begun to talk about the overtones of this in black projects and yeah. how sexual programming is deployed as part of these projects, of literally yeah. being able to take a person and have them transition back and forth between literally different genders yeah we're not you know we're not talking about your typical sexual programming that no. everybody knows about we're not talking about monarch programming or kitten programming or sex slave or any of that kind of stuff we all know about that we're going to start getting into another area that has not been discussed even by people who will discuss a lot of stuff and um well the alternative you know and this is something and we've, we've talked about this the alternative media the alternative communities really don't handle these subjects at all nobody's talking about this Nope. And what I'm finding out is that there are people hidden in corners of our communities who don't really have a gap bridged for them in terms of communicating on these subjects. So it's kind of where we're going. And I think after we come back, in, after I come back in June, there'll be a lot more to talk about with this because there's some things that I really want to bring up and discuss. Mm -hmm. since, since, the very, since I very first joined Randy, this has been a conversation going on between yeah. he and I in the background and that we were, at first we were looking for a, someone that we could talk to or interview or someone who we could do this with. And at a certain point we became, it became clear that this was going to be something that he and I were just going to have to do on our own together. And then so, the, you know, this has just been trying to determine the best, most useful and helpful way to bring this information forward 
and have a discussion around it that is the one that is intended and not one where people get distracted off into a, you know, the, the, there's a lot, a lot of, you know, See, the, part of the problem is part of the problem is that the, the alternative community itself has a lot of closets in it. Mm -hmm. And I think I can safely say at this point that a few are ready to walk out and you're going to be very surprised. And it is time that we deal with these issues in a real sense, because these are human issues and they're issues that have to do with the agendas. I mean, we've been, we've been programmed and engineered, in, engineered into roles that were designed to make us a consumer society. I mean, most people don't look beyond the hundred years and realize that this nuclear family concept that came into play in the 50s was designed to market the American dream, to sell houses, cars, consumer products, and to build a stable Western economy on the heels of World War II. Before that, it was a different world. And before that, it was a different world because the Industrial Revolution brought things into play. But the fact of the matter is, we can go back in history as early or as late as the 1930s. I have anecdotal and historical evidence that it was a different culture in terms of how it accepted not just homosexual, bisexual, lesbian, and trans people, but that in fact the culture itself embraced them on a level that got plowed under during the depression. We became conservative again, and all of this got blown under. And there's a number of stories out there that come out of Hollywood in the 1920s and the 1930s. If you think that the 60s and the 70s were when gay liberation began, that was a re-liberation from something that at the beginning of the 20th century was just taken for granted, that gay culture existed within the, within the United States. It existed within the cultures. Go look at the history of Paris and Europe at large and even the Eastern cultures and how suppressed we've been for all of that last century. And at the end of it, it began to break out. And at the end of it, we began to see the political fuckery that comes into play when sexual politics, gender politics, and the politics of expression of individual personality is pandered to, bartered, sold, and co-opted by corporations and political entities. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to be clear that none of this, none of what we're talking about is intended as any kind of attack or disrespect on what some people consider a traditional no. family, because those are, you know, like that. I, I think people, I think that there's, I think that that's important too. Like, I think if that's, if, you know, if that's what people want and that's what feels good to them, that's what they should do. And other people want and feel something different. And, and there, there's, you know, we, there's a, a much more vast array of possibilities. It's not just either this or that, you know what I mean? There's lots of things in between. And um, I think there's, I think that traditional family can be really beautiful. I mean, for much of my life, I that sad that I didn't have that. My my parents broke up when I was very young and I you know, was raised by my father, which was very uncharacteristic, untypical, atypical at that time. And, yeah. you know, like I was the first person I knew. I was there, I knew one other person when I was little that my, when my parents got divorced, I'd only known one person before that that had divorced parents. And I was the first person I knew that was raised by my father. You know what I mean? And it wasn't always easy. Like I love my father and, and he, you know, while I have lots of issues and complaints overall, he was very committed and did the best job that he could in a difficult situation. My mom was around and whatever, but you know, um, she was sort of limited in her capacity and abilities as a parent. Um, but there was nights where I was up crying because I wanted a traditional family. So this is, I'm not against the idea of traditional family. Um, you know, but just the idea that like, either you are into traditional family or you're some kind of heretic or you're into traditional family or you're completely into something untraditional. Like, like all this stuff, it's like all, it goes to all these other polarizations we were just talking about, that we were talking about before. We live in a completely polarized society where people are just constantly being swung from one side to the other. In the 1950s, it was traditional family. And now here we are 60 years out and they're trying to swing everything far the other way. Like there's lots of stuff in the middle there. And I encourage people to explore that space in the middle. That's, that's where 
actual, like real humanity and real life happens. And did that make sense? Real humanity and real life happens when people can be who they authentically are and express. There's plenty of people out there to populate the nuclear family and to have children. And there are people out here who that life is not for them. They have another destiny, another role. Mm -hmm. And I think the culture needs how the culture needs to learn how to respect it. The problem is that the culture will make a sideshow out of everything, everything. in the process. And, everything. And everything we've talked about this whole whole hour. We're going to call this one Sideshow Bob or something like Circus something Sideshow. Like that. Yeah, roll another fatty. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, but this is, but you know, and with the process we're in right now is eventually going to make a sideshow out of the traditional family. And I'm not for that either. You know what I mean? Like they're going to make it, oh, you silly people in the middle of the country who still believe in a traditional family. Ha <laughs> ha! That, that, that's, that's not helpful. Like that is not, you know what I mean? So, you know, there was a time when uh, the trans people were the sideshow and now they're the fucking, you know, now it's like everything, they, they, they're, they can do no wrong. And you know, people who believe in a more traditional life are being made fun of. But it's the exact, it's what always will happen. When one happens, then the other it was going to ha happen on the flip side. And we have to stop doing this because this is what keeps people controllable. It keeps people being herded from right to left. So we're back to the sheep again, right? We talked yeah. about the sheep dipping with the blonde hair and the same thing with swinging people. You know, the pendulum swings far to each side when really you're looking for sort of the sweet spot that is more in the middle and I'm, it has nothing to do with centrist politics. That's not what I'm talking about. But the, in the middle is really where st the, the stuff is. It's These extreme the outliers that everybody gets focused on because it makes for, you know, polarization and good entertainment and all that kind of stuff. We have to stop falling for that shit. Yeah. All right. Well, well that, that was a smoking first hour for someone who didn't think he is. had much to say. I didn't have much to say. <laughs> no, but we will in the future. And until then, uh, if you're we'll watching see on the other YouTube, side for the patrons, sorry, right. patreon.com forward slash off planet media. Yeah. If you come join us, subscribe. come join us in the second hour. We're going to talk about some uh, strangeness sense, uh, syncretism and synchronicities going on right now. And whatever else Randy feels like talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a few minutes, guys. All right.